All right, so let's talk about how to read a set of analog calipers, also called vernier calipers. Uh, sometimes I like to be fancy and call them vernier calipers. And these are the kinds of calipers a lot of jewelers have. You might have a set of digital, so if you want to skip these instructions as part of your flush setting course, please feel free to skip. I absolutely won't be offended. But if you have these kinds of analog calipers or vernier calipers, let's talk about the way that you're going to read them because it's not totally intuitive at first. And if you're from the United States, chances are you also didn't grow up learning the metric system unless you were forced to in a math or a science class. And it might not have been a kind of measurement that you continued on with into adulthood. But in jewelry, we use millimeters all the time. So let's get comfortable reading these analog calipers. So to start, let's talk about the terminology. So on this bottom part here, these are the lower jaws. And these are what will open up to hold the stones that we're going to measure today for flush setting. On the top here, these are the upper jaws. When you open up the calipers, these jaws can measure the inside diameter of something, which is really handy when you want to measure the inside of a ring or the inside of a bezel to make sure that you've got your measurements right. That's what you would use these for. Then we also have this little knob here. And what it does is it locks the calipers in place. So let's say that you wanted to take a measurement of something and then scribe that exact measurement onto your metal. What you can do is take the measurement, screw down this little knob to lock it in place, and then scribe your metal to the exact measurement. It's also great when you want to hang on to a stone to make sure that you've got the exact right measurement. This lock comes in really handy. Okay, next, these, the biggest numbers down here, on the main part of the calipers, these are the millimeters, all of those smaller marks, and then the centimeter measurements are the numbered marks. Down here on this part that's kind of part of the lower jaw, this is where we'll measure within a tenth of a millimeter. So what we're going to be looking for here is where this zero on the tenth of a millimeter part lines up with any number or marking on your millimeter and centimeter part. All right, so what I mean when I say that we're looking for this zero in the tenth of a millimeter line to line up with any of the millimeter or centimeter markings on the top line, well, I mean it literally. We are looking for two lines to meet up. So I'm looking at the zero on this part of the tenth of a millimeter scale, and I'm looking to see the first spot where that line coming up from the zero lines up and matches with any of the other lines on the millimeter and centimeter scale. And I can see that where that zero is lining up, it is lining up at four millimeters. So we know now that this stone is four millimeters across. Let's do that one more time. I'm looking at this zero here on the tenth of a millimeter part of the calipers, and I'm looking to see where the line coming up from the zero is meeting up with any of these other lines. And I'm using that to determine what millimeter width my stone is. I'm going to let you guys in on a secret that for the first few years of me making jewelry, I needed help remembering how to read this. And so what I did is I took a Sharpie and I just marked a tiny arrow pointing up to that zero on the tenth of a millimeter scale. And that acted as my visual cue for years to remember where to look to know where I was going to measure. Feel free to use this as a tip or a trick or a technique to help you remember where to look on your calipers too. All right, next up, we're going to measure something just a little bit more challenging. Okay, so I think that it would be really helpful to see that again. 
but this time with a slightly more challenging stone in that we are measuring smaller stones and we'll be looking at a different spot on the calipers. So just a reminder, this line down here is to measure to the 10th of a millimeter. And these lines up here, these are to measure the millimeter and the centimeter. So we have the tiny pink lab grown sapphires. These are the same stones that some of you will recognize from our full length video course on flush setting, same stones. So if you're taking that course already, great. This video is also included with the rest of the information in that course. So once again, we have picked up the stone in the lower jaws of the calipers. I screwed down the lock to keep it in place so that I could lay down the calipers and have a good look at where my measurement lands. And here, once again, we're looking at where the zero line lines up with something on the millimeter line. And here we can see that that is measuring at two millimeters. It might be slightly over. Sometimes the shadows can be a little bit deceiving. And so you might want to pick it up and look at it from a few angles to make sure. But this looks like it is definitely two millimeters. All right, so this is the last one. And what we're going to do now is have a look at what it would mean to measure something that's not right on the millimeter. That is something that has to be measured in tenths of a millimeter. So let's pretend for a moment that we are going to measure a two and a half millimeter stone. And this time I'm going to let you know the measurement up front so that you know what to look for. So before, when we want to measure on the millimeter or on the centimeter, we are looking for where the zero lines up with one of those lines. But now we need to know how to measure two and a half millimeters. So two and a half, also known as 2.5. And that means that this time we'll be looking for where the five lines up with the line. Wherever the five lines up, that's going to be the halfway point. And you can kind of visualize it on these calipers. If you take a close look at where the zero lines up, you can see that it's in between the two and the three. And then if you look over here, where the five lines up, you'll notice that it lines up exactly with a line. And that means that we are at the 0.5 mark. So now we know that this measures 2.5. And you can use this with any measurement. So let's say that you needed to measure something that was 2.3 millimeters. You would look for where the three lines up with the line. Similarly, if you were looking for something that's 3.7 millimeters, you would move the calipers over to the three, and then you would keep sliding it over until the seven matched up with a line. Wanna hear that again? Let's do that again. Okay, so before, when we needed to measure out to the millimeter or to the centimeter, we were looking for where the zero line met up with a line on the millimeter part of the calipers. But now what we wanna do is measure something that is 2.5 millimeters or two and a half millimeters. So now what we're going to do is look to see where the five, that is five tenths, five matches up with a line. You can also eyeball it a little bit. If you look where the zero is on the calipers now is exactly in between the two and the three. But then if we look over here at the five, you can see that it lines up exactly with the line. We know now that those calipers measure 2.5 millimeters or two and a half millimeters. And you can use the same technique to measure something that is 2.3 or 2.7. You'll just need to look for where those corresponding numbers line up on the calipers. All right, so now you know how to read the analog calipers. This is a really good tool to use in case you ever have a set of digital calipers and the battery runs out or they stop working, you'll be able to read the analog calipers with ease.